guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And Friday the third fucking date this this week. Could you believe that there's an unmade sequel or more than one? I couldn't. And guess what? It's still tied up on Judge Judy's dick. <laughs> Can we get a new She's one? She's got a huge one, man. She's, Let me it, tell you. It's ya. going across time. If Judge Judy had a wang, it would be the biggest wang. Shit. She calls justice. it Judge Dredd. It's the gavel of justice, Judge Judy's dick is. Five wild ass Friday the 13th movies that almost happened. One of them had the Punisher in it, you stupid sexist oh, shit. Oh God. But that was a good one. That's the coolest one <laughs> That of was the cool one. Let's yeah. talk about that one first, because I think that's both of our favorites. Immediately. Uh, first off, who wouldn't want to see Dolph Lundgren butt naked in the sewer fighting fucking Jason? I love it. Like, you know, uh, you're talking about... Show that in Little Tokyo. You're talking about, yeah, he has a big Tokyo, I'm sure. Uh, but you're talking about... <laughs> to like, be in proportion, it must be huge. It's big as fuck. You guys remember, uh, back in 1989, the Dolph Lundgren classic, The Punisher, that came out. Uh, for what it was and when it came out at the time, I kind of liked it. I, the worst. I, I thought it was good as fuck. You know, it was always weird to see... Uh, the camera zoom in when he's like praying in the sewer naked in his little sweaty butt crack. But it was always a strange thing. But he, and it always pissed me That's off. That's what I do after video. Yeah. By the way. I go down to the sewer and just think think on. I think upon my sins. You know, the only thing that pissed me off about the movie, he never wore the skull, the, the actual Punisher skull. Yeah. But the, either way, it was a great idea. Like the with you know casting Dolph Lundgren as that guy. I think he did a really good job. But there was a strange idea where they were going to have that particular version of the Punisher take on fucking Jason Voorhees. And I gotta say, I'm done with that shit, okay? Let's throw some ninja stars at the wall and see if it sticks. Because <laughs> I like it. It's wild. They bought the rights to the Punisher because Marvel was just selling this shit because this is way before the Marvel Universe and all that. Yep. It was cheap. They bought it for almost nothing. Or we're going to. I don't know exactly what happened there. But the idea was they were going to Marvel buy... was selling off their properties like a fucking pimp in New York. Like, you can have my hoe for $2. <laughs> so the original idea, some people wanted Frank Castle's character to be played by a huge actor. But instead they decided on just going ahead and going with Dolph Lundgren because they could get him for cheap. And, and he was the most uh, recognizable. Right. So they were going to buy Dolph Lundgren as the Punisher and have a movie where it was the Punisher versus Jason Voorhees. Friday 13th. The whole idea was that this mob boss was going to go to Crystal Lake just to get away because that's what you do. And Frank Castle was going to follow him there. The, the, the guy, Mancuso or whatever, wanted like eternal life or he wanted power. So yeah. he wanted to find the, the book, which sort of, if you could tie it together, you could probably throw in some Evil Dead in there because it, it could have been the Necronomicon. But it was more about this mob boss versus Jason in the final part of it. And yeah. then Frank Castle was just there. So it wasn't as much the Punisher versus Jason Voorhees as I would have liked because they, they both had an equal bad guy they were going after kind of I didn't like that part of it but just the aesthetics alone of the Punisher and Jason Voorhees being in Crystal Lake fighting holy shit one of the scenes that they had to, did talk about it, it's corny as fuck because there's one scene in particular where Mancuso is throwing black lightning bolts at Jason and then Punisher <laughs> comes up and starts shooting both of them and yeah. then has to take down Jason after Mancuso is defeated I'm like dude I want to be there I want to watch that whole thing it was like it, it's like I, I can only imagine being a writer and then the creative director coming in and pitching this idea you're like you fucking scared me but I like it Star no dude it's no different than if we'd had the Punisher versus Wolverine Wolverine is basically unkillable it would almost have been like My second favorite comic of all time it would have been yeah it would have been a, a like a blueprint for if they ever decided to go with the punisher versus yeah. wolverine yeah. so but either way, yeah, yeah, it, it was a good it, like i it, it's the best of the unmade sequels in my opinion yeah way, me too unmade scripts number two and this one's got this shit's gonna have nuts in it mm -hmm. this one's weird teenage mutant ninja turtles versus friday the 13th jason Voorhees. yeah that's a real fucking thing did it's weird when you when you follow the trail of this it's hard to it's hard to ascertain it some people say it did happen some people said it was gonna happen was it live action Sounds was like it my animated? sex life <laughs> it could have happened know. I, don't I don't know i was only in there for a little bit of time gotta go to bed bath was only in there for a little bit can't figure it out but there is some idea in this universe that there was this movie called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Behind the Mask of Krang. That's too long. I think it was just called the Behind the Mask with Krang. Behind the, yeah. It sounds like Mario Party Bovich. with Krang. Behind the Mask or with Krang. Shit. A special tonight. But long story short, it takes place after the events of Jason Takes Manhattan's bubbly fucking baby Jason's in that sewer getting all melty and shit. And because he's in the sewer, uh, the Ninja Turtles get word of it. They go out to fight him. Splinter sends Casey mm -hmm. Jones to find him and eventually the turtles end up fighting Jason and it's like old school Eastman and Laird, old school comic yeah. books, like they're killing, murdering members of the Foot Clan and eventually 
in some fashion or form, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles end up fighting Jason Voorhees in the sewers of Manhattan. Yeah, you know, look, it was going to be more true to uh, the comic book uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that we, that people that grew up reading those, it was very violent, mm -hmm. it was very in your face. I mean, literally, in the first fucking comic book, they kill Shredder. They slice that motherfucker up. They don't give a shit. <laughs> I bet he has to have to look for a can opener. He's dead. He doesn't. Uh, but it was going to be a very violent you turtles. You die. You die without honor. Yeah. Uh, Suzuki. Oroko Suzuki. Suzuki. Uh, <laughs> no, <not> Suzuki. Uh, <laughs> uh, Leo Shadoshi. <laughs> if this movie exists, there had to be a script. There had to be something. I I wonder if that line that ever, uh, you remember in the original team and team uh, when they were like, uh, who the heck is that? Wayne Gretzky? On steroids? <laughs> I wonder if they would have thrown that line in there because Casey Jones first appears to him with the fucking hockey mask on and like, you know, the thing. So you gotta know what a cricket is before you know what a crumpet is. Jose Canseco back. Tell me you didn't pay money for this. But yeah, I, I think there's a lot of lines that were probably left over from this particular script that they yeah. they used for the team and T movie. If that's true, man, holy shit those I think it probably did happen. I think that the, I think it was actually happen. I think it actually did was maybe not filmed live action, but they actually had storyboards for it, there was a script for it, it was fully fleshed Some out. Some people say it happened and they just pulled it from release and now it's impossible to find. Yeah, the goddamn butterfly. Thing. I don't believe that. I can't believe that. I can't believe that that exists out there somewhere, but it's a wild fucking story and it's hard to figure. Some people say it was a joke, it was a rumor, it never fucking happened at all. Yeah. I don't know, but all we know is that this is one of the wildest ideas. The Ninja Turtles versus Jason fucking Voorhees, guys. Holy tits. And there have been toys for it. And I'd they, have bought every fucking oh, one of them. Oh, dude, that would have they would have made. I'd have bought them all. Neca Hasbro, <laughs> suck my dick. I'll buy you all. <laughs> Number three, another crazy ass idea was Crystal Lake. Diaries. Now this was going to be set because of the found footage craze that was going on. They were going to have Jason at Crystal Lake. They were going to do it found footage style. And that's basically all you need to know. Now a lot of people would shit on this instant meal. That would be cheap as fuck. That would be trash. Look at the original Jason. Like look at the original Friday the 13th. I mean they, they had such little to work with and you never actually saw the killer's face. It was just like, yeah. what are you doing here? Harpoon fucking, you know, stab. Like, Jason found footage I feel like could have invigorated the whole franchise. I think that would have been scary if you're just like, I don't know what to do, dude, and you turn around and Jason Voorhees comes out real quick and like cuts somebody. I think it could have worked. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, I, what, I mean, the, I don't remember the year that it was uh, proposed in because it, it would have been interesting if it had been before the Blair Witch Project to introduce. It was after the craze of that. So. Oh, so it was during that. Well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> they came out with Diary of the Dead, George Romero. I mean, it wasn't amazing or anything like that, but it was still inventive. I think that if you have a found footage uh, kind of flick around Jason Voorhees and them investigating it and doing this whole fucking thing with the found footage aspect, I think it works pretty well. I think it lends, and I, I know this would have been a corny, quick kind of film they would have made for money. I don't think they would have put the time or effort into it, but it really, it makes you think about if they had done a found footage movie with Jason Voorhees, like a guy that was out there trying to figure out whether the legend of Jason Voorhees was real, using found footage, like the way, you know, just walking around, I think it would have been phenomenal. I don't know. Just touch it. I don't Just lick it. the tip of my No, it just lick the tip it of my finger like and then duty. you'll know what it would have been. No. It would just, you just gotta delve into a little bit. Just the tip, ouch, ouch, not too much, you're on my hair. But at the same time, if you just touch that, uh, like we never got that. Think about it. With the, oh, the closest thing we got to one of our favorite slashers in in found footage, uh, even in the height of pound, uh, found footage, was Halloween Resurrection. Mm. Now we all saw that turned out. That was a big old frozen chunk of shit instead of a Cracker Barrel oh, refrigerator where they keep their biscuits. Uh, that was a, that was a chunk of shit. It sucked. Mm. Obviously, Halloween Resurrection, but. We've never seen someone like a Neil Blomkamp or something like that. Someone with the chops to actually make a great film. Because when they film. say, hey, do you want to do a Jason movie? They're like, my career's over. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that's, that's why what? they don't do it. But now it's a little bit different. Now it's like, hey, look what Dave Gordon Green just did. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I think that they could, if they did it right, if they had their druthers about them, that's not a sentence people say. If they had if they had a really good plan and they had the right director, I feel like a found footage Jason Voorhees film could rock the fucking tits off of your uncle's wife. It could be yep. amazing. And it could have been, probably would have sucked, but could have been great. Number four, Jason Kills. Cool idea. Halloween Kills, look at what that's doing right now. Jason Kills, adjust your slashing. 
Now the adjusted slashing part is fucking awful bean sauce. It's like you shit your Jason pants. Jason kills his at own the movie Olympics. career. Hashtag court. <laughs> <laughs> it was Jason kills adjust your slashing in the midst of the scream, the ring, all this stuff that was going on. There was an idea at some point to tie a Jason film to all that. And mm -hmm. what they wanted to do was eventually at some point to have this 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 guy who found a Jason unreleased Friday the 13th movie at, a, at his neighbor's house or yard sale or something like that. Ultimately what happens is by the end of the movie, the movie in a way comes to life and Jason literally crawls out of the TV screen to fucking start murdering people via Samara the Ring style. I, I, you know, look, as far, I mean, it, it's obviously a fucking rip off. Like, listen, Doc, you 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 copy off that. Yes. You literally copied, you copied the highlight of the film. And, look, and the Proctor didn't give a fuck either. They were like walking around, making sure everybody did their SAT correctly. And the Proctor looked over at you and you were like, you're like, he's like, it's fine. You copy. But at the same time, it's so crazy and the idea is so novel. I I would have been, it's not novel in the fact that it's original, but the fact that it was the goddamn ring meets Jason. I'd be like, you know what? I'd watch the shit out of that because that was like, the, yeah. the ring scared the fuck out of me. I kind of liked that idea. Like, I mean, I'm not saying it was going to be a good movie at all, but the, it, it's so weird. It's so strange. It's like, goddamn, if you smoked weed and watched this shit, you're not going to be okay for a week. <laughs> like, the idea is there and then the execution shit. The idea of Jason Takes Manhattan is fucking cool. Mm -hmm. The execution was shit. The idea of this is shit. Maybe the execution would have been cool. I don't know. It's fucking wily. I like it though. It makes you want to fucking say shut the fuck up and dance. It's like when you put a game genie in on, on Super Mario Brothers. Alright, the last one that's most interesting to us. To us, the most interesting was what should have been the sequel to the 2009 reboot, which Jay and I are both fans of. It, it made fucking money. And sadly, the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot made money too, but they never followed up with either of them because the Conjuring universe happened and they went Unfortunately, that Unfortunately, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, uh, they don't accept Wick here, sir. <laughs> like, it was a terrible <laughs> fucking movie. The, the idea for the sequel was going to be written by uh, Swift and Shannon, who uh, took part in the, the Freddy vs. Jason movie. Yeah. And it was going to feature Jason in the snow, which Never Hike in the Snow gave us that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I just feel like one of the most interesting ideas of the entire Friday the 13th verse is to see what that Jason would have done as a follow-up to that movie. Because yeah. in, a, in a weird way, the 2019, 2009 reboot stands alone. It happened, they grind up Jason's head or whatever, he pops up out of the thing at the end, and we're never ever gonna see what that Jason would have done again. It, it really is a lost opportunity for Jason because I, I think that if anything and else- And even Derek Mears too. Derek Mears was awesome. And, and by the way, a very sweet dude. I would love to have him, uh, on the, on the show sometime to interview because he seems like a very, very gen generous and very sweet guy and yeah. I just want to like touch his wiener. But it, beyond that, I, I do think that the, I, the setting of Jason, you've done everything you can with Camp Crystal Lake. You know, you've got the, the bugs and the mosquitoes and the, you know, the guys wearing short shorts and, and his balls are coming out a little bit. Let's go in the snow and the cold, dark, and and have something like that. And I, I, I get it. It really pisses me off because that would be the natural evolution of the character. I think. Why wouldn't you go uh, as Jason? Because he's a spirit of the Crystal Lakes, the Lake of Crystals. Why wouldn't you have? If someone were exploring up there, he would just come up to defend it. Well, I mean, I, and honestly, yeah. I, honestly, that would have been number one if Never Hike in the Snow hadn't come out. Yeah, they, they, and they did a great job with this, yeah. so check that out if you can. That's our five most favorite of all time, unmade Friday the 13th scripts. There's a shit ton more. There's one that took place in the 80s. That one, there's one that shows uh, Elias, Jason's dad, killing along one. with his mom. Uh, that was the most recent one. That, that was the one that, that I, come out. But, but the thing about that one was, it, it, like, all they, they were going to concentrate, I mean, we can talk about it for just a second because it's not in our top five, but they were going to concentrate on, on Jason's dad, ugly as fuck. I mean, it was probably Iggy Pop. <laughs> uh, Elias, like you mentioned, and then it was gonna. Which I can't help but imagine Elias Cotier in that role. You know what? You know, I, you know, you know what I imagine. I imagine Elias. I, I imagine it being played by Matthew Lillard now. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know why. I just feel like Lillard could do it. That would but, be entertaining. Actually. Yeah, but Elias was going to be the main character, and it was going to show the dad of Jason Voorhees and what he fucking did, and he cheated on his mom. And Pamela was going to be crazy. But it, you weren't going to get the full on Jason until like the last twenty minutes of the yeah. film. So I mean, listen, as a fan of Friday the Thirteenth and Jason, we both are. The reality of it is, the two thousand nine remake did it right. You got the quick little recap that you needed, yeah. but they, you know, it's it's like Spider-Man, it's like Batman. 
I don't want to have the origin story every fucking time. Okay, right. the story's been told a million times. The Just get to the fucking point. The 2009 reboot killed that because they right. told the origin Boom. story in like five seconds. It's like, hey, hey, that bitch got her head cut off and her poor little boy got pissed. We got backhead Jason. We got full on Jason, and that's what I think we want at this point. We want full on Jason. Yeah, so just like Spider Man and Batman. So, yeah. yeah, I agree with you that that one's not as interesting to me as some of the other ones. There was an anime that was going to be produced mm -hmm. by Studio Ghibli or whatever. Uh, there is Pikachu uh, came uh, in there and stole his mask. <laughs> there was one that was supposed to follow up the events of two, where uh, Guinea. Oh. Uh, was still Jenny. gonna be alive. Ginny was still gonna be alive. Uh, there was one that was gonna follow up the New Blood, where the guy who played the boyfriend was gonna be like, "Oh, actually, I do the killings." Like he wrote the script, and his whole idea was like, "Well, in the end, you find out it was just me, you, and Jason's still not around." And I'm like, "You made this all about you." We, do you, know, do you know, Jason? You, you silly bitch. Do you know who that actor was? Because he wants to make it all about him. It was Scott Stapp. Corey Feldman. It was Scott Stapp. Oh. And Feldman co-directed it. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's a ton of wild Jason movies that never no, I mean, how fucking egotistical and driven are you? I know. Like, I was in I one know. movie, I but I feel like I should be the center of attention at the end of it. And about a thousand, by the way, Freddy vs. Jason's that never happened. How come you call him but not There's me? a whole fucking book on it, Jim Joe. I'll book Jim Joe. Hey, man. You, you, guys, you guys, do yourself a favor and check out those links, man. It's a, it's yeah. a crazy read. Yeah. Hey. Happy Friday the fucking 13th. We love your fucking faces. Click that subscribe button. Get some goddamn machete right in between your gooch. And just because it's Friday the 13th, don't trust her when she says she's on birth control. Never. Lace it up. Every Lace day. it up. Every day of the week. Put that raincoat on Friday your Friday the 13th is probably the worst day. Yeah, don't, don't fuck nothing. Do that. Yeah. All right, at least put a Jimmy, put a Jimmy down. Put a Jimmy World. Just put a Jimmy down on your wiener. Hey guys, this is Mark Wahlberg, and I just wanted to take a second to talk to you about We Watched a Movie. They got a really good Patreon going on over there. They'll do videos for you based on any of their characters. They'll do commentaries for you. They'll do movie reviews for you. They got behind the scenes videos. You got 20% off of all their merch. They'll even make you your own video store card like Blockbuster back in the day. They got commentaries just sitting there waiting to be fucked by your movie ears. I'll put the link below. We gotta outrun the wind.